Now that our illuminator for epifluorescence is turned on, we're directing light through the waveguide and into the epi-illuminator of the microscope. The light comes down through the body of the microscope and it actually travels through a filter pack that's built into the body of the microscope. We have four filter packs in this microscope. The light travels through the filter pack and into the body of the microscope and we can send that light to the specimen by pushing on the shutter button. And here you can now see that the light is illuminated on our specimen. We have four illumination methods for fluorescence microscopy on the Leica confocal microscope. The first one as you see here is for FITC. We also have filter packs for rhodamine, for DAPI, and for green fluorescent protein. To actuate the filter packs inside the microscope, you press the buttons on the front of the microscope which allow you to select one of the four filter packages. This button is for FITC, this button is for rhodamine, this button is for DAPI, and this button is for green fluorescent protein. Do not touch these two buttons on the front of the microscope, and only rarely will you actuate one of these buttons, which we will discuss at a later date. Four important buttons are found on the left side of the instrument just inside the focus knob. The third button down allows you to actuate and toggle between the different filter cubes just as you did on the front of the microscope. This is very convenient if you're using two different fluorescent filter packages, you can toggle between them simply by pressing the third button. The first button allows you to toggle between the different transmitted light illumination methods that you're using. For example, bright field, DIC, or polarized light. The second button down allows you to go from transmitted light to fluorescence. And so you can toggle between your transmitted light method that you've selected and the fluorescent method that you've selected. So for example, if you're going from FITC back to Brightfield or DIC, with one simple button, you can toggle between those two. Finally, the bottom button is very important because the bottom button allows you to switch between observation in the microscope and sending the image over to the computer. So when you push the bottom button, it sends the image to the computer for scan mode. You can also go from scan mode back to, back to direct observation through the microscope by pushing that bottom button. On the right side of the instrument, just outside the focus knob, are three important buttons that have to do with setting the Z-axis up and down position. Please do not touch these buttons as this has already been set by the technician. As indicated, by pushing the top button, you're toggling between the different illumination methods, transmitted light illumination in the microscope. And you can see this on the screen. The top line shows that I'm in transmitted light bright field. If I push the button, it switches to DIC. If I push the button, it switches to polarized light. And so by actuating the button and looking at the top screen, you can see what transmitted light illumination method you're using in the microscope. When I rotate a particular objective into view, I can see on the screen the objective that the microscope is detecting. So for example, now it's the 10x objective. If I rotate again, it shows the 20x objective. The screen also shows you if the 1x magnification changer is in place or if it's set to scan mode. Often when it's set to scan mode, the microscope, when you come back to visual observation, you must actuate the 1x magnification changer so that you can see the image in the field of view. We'll discuss that more later. Just outside the focus knob on the left side of the instrument are another important cluster of buttons which perform different functions on the microscope. We'll discuss the intensity of the illumination, we will discuss the aperture diaphragm, we will discuss transmitted light or reflected light illumination, and we will also discuss 
a field diaphragm that's only used for fluorescence. The transmitted light illuminator of the microscope comes on automatically when you turn on the power. It comes on at full intensity. And so to turn down the intensity of the transmitted light illumination, you use these knobs on the side of the microscope labeled intensity, and you turn down the illumination this way. Line three of the screen shows you a bulb and it shows you the intensity of that bulb and you can lower the intensity again by pushing down on the button. It's a good idea to keep the intensity low when you're not looking through the microscope to save the life of the bulb. Also as discussed previously on the upright compound microscope, we have an aperture diaphragm in the system. The aperture diaphragm is a diaphragm that gives us contrast and depth of focus. The aperture diaphragm can be increased in opening and decreased in opening by actuating these two buttons. On the illumination line of the screen, the aperture diaphragm is displayed and the size of the opening is displayed. And as I actuate the button, you can see the aperture diaphragm closing down. The aperture diaphragm should be closed two-thirds of the way down. We will show you momentarily how to look down the tube of the microscope to know where your aperture diaphragm should be set. On the front panel of the microscope are two buttons that direct the light to observation or to the camera which is built into the side of the microscope. You shouldn't be manipulating these buttons unless you need to do photography right off the microscope. The second to the last line on the screen shows the beam path and whether it's directed to the camera or for observation. And so by actuating the observation camera button, you can see that 100% is directed to observation or 100% is directed to the camera. Once again, on the left side of the microscope, the very bottom line is the transmitted light, incident light, button changer. So you can push this and go from your transmitted light selected observation to your fluorescent incident light illumination. When you switch from transmitted light to incident light, this is shown on the top line of the screen. And so you can watch the screen change from transmitted light to incident light fluorescence and back to transmitted light again. Mm -hmm.